Thank you, everybody. So I think that it's a good time to start uh, a talk of Professor Mitsuru Sugimoto. Uh, his title is A Constructive Approach to Seminar Seminaria Web Equations. But definitely, I'd like to introduce Professor Sugimoto. Uh, Professor Sugimoto has won his analysis prize around 10 years ago. And he specializes in harmonic analysis, free analysis, partial differential equations, among others. So he is specialized in modulation spaces. Actually, he uh, has many works with Naoto Tomita at Tokyo Osaka University, but definitely uh, I want to say another word. Uh, actually, he's working on how to say restriction problem and related to this pro problem related to restriction problems. And today, so he's now going to talk about uh, his research on partial differential equation. Uh, maybe this is maybe because there are many people who are specialized in partial differential equations. Um, but let me also add that Professor Sugimoto has many um, specializations such as hamk analysis and pre analysis and so on and so on. So now I think it's time to start his talk. So please, uh, Professor Sugimoto, to start uh, this talk. Thank you. Uh, so, so thank you very much for the introduction and uh, and also thank you very much for the invitation to this nice uh, seminar. So maybe so now so uh, it's a very difficult time. So maybe it's, uh, at least at least the uh, travel around the world is extremely restricted. So maybe uh, almost impossible to travel to uh, to any other countries. But now I can travel to everywhere online. So maybe I'm very happy to, to have such a good, nice opportunity to give my talk. So, so I selected my topic. So uh, as a, uh, in PDE, so as, a, uh, as introduced, so um, because maybe, maybe this is my newest research topic. So, but the, but the topic itself is, uh, is rather old, but uh, maybe the, in, but in some sense, it's new. So uh, I'll explain and what what did that what did that mean? So during my talks, so the title is a constructive approach to semilinear wave equations. So what is a semilinear wave equation? It is, sorry, okay, it's very simple. So let's consider this type of the nonlinear wave equations uh, with power type nonlinearities, and let's call it the NLW. It's uh, is a, the abbreviation of nonlinear waves. Okay, let's consider this type of the wave equation. So, and because there, uh, and I always, during my talk, I always assume that P is strictly greater than one. It is, is a super linear gross nonlinearities and uh, the spatial dimension is uh, greater than or equal to two. Okay, we always assume it. Otherwise, we cannot expect the uh, existence of the solution to this uh, equation. So this is a basic assumption here. Okay, so the solution with the given initial data can be given as a fixed point of the contraction mapping. This is a very standard uh, strategy to find the solution of this equation. This is a, if a, let's consider this kind of a mapping. The right hand side is a, some some in, uh, some in, integral by, by uh, equation which corresponds to the original uh, differential equations, and uh, the solution of the, uh, the such a integral equation means that uh, the, u is a fixed point of the, of the, this uh, mapping. Okay. And if we find some nice setting, some nice Banach space X, and which uh, where uh, the, such kind of contraction mapping argument works, then we can find the solution of the nonlinear wave equations in this Banach space. This is a very basic strategy. But, the, but the, by this method, we can say only the existence of the, only say the existence of the solution. And we cannot see directly the, the solution. This is very, I think it's a very uh, basic question that what, what does the solution look like? Because we, this method we can <laughs> solution. So, okay. So, 
uh, now I have some messages that uh, our network is uh, unstable for some but, but, but if we you cannot see or hear me or my slide please, please dis disturb my, my calls in, in time okay so 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 now okay let, let's tr tr try to capture the most characteristic solution of NLW which is called a self-similar solution and uh, in many situations, such kind of self -speci special solution plays some uh, special role in many contexts. But anyway, so let's tr try to uh, see the, see the self, self similar solution. Okay, what, what is a self similar solution? Okay, so maybe it is a very uh, basic observation that if U is a solution to the NLW, then this you some scaled uh, function you sub lambda also uh, solves the solutions. This is a very basic observation for every uh, constant lambda. Okay, uh, so you can easily check, check some this kind of thing by just sub plugging this function to the NLW and and to see that this is surely solves the equation. So, but. Uh, it's important to notice that the nonlinearity, uh, nonlinear the P is a uh, uh, order of the power nonlinearity. Okay, so the nonlinearity reflected in the, in this way the, in in the in the, this observations. Okay, so uh, what I am trying to say is that this observation reflects the the uh, the uh, the uh, the reflects the nonlinearity <laughs> in some sense reflects the nonlinearity of this. It, equations has okay so the self similar solution is by definition is a solution and if, if the u solution u and it's scaled solution u lambda always coincide for any lambda if the function u satisfy this special property then let's call it this u be the self similar solutions okay so, uh, so f f first we discuss the existence of the self similar solution and which has been already established by many uh, literatures and, uh, and especially so uh, the my main topics is, is uh, to find the self similar solution for as large range of P as possible. Okay, so in order to state uh, more precisely, we introduce some uh, critical indices. Okay, so the first one is a uh, p k sub k of n. It is uh, n plus one over n minus one. Uh, the, this k uh, comes from the initial of the professor Toshio Kato, and the, uh, this because this uh, indices is introduced by Toshio Kato, professor, late professor Toshio Kato. So because uh, this, this is uh, important, so because the uh, uh, lower bound for the this is a lower bound for the existence of the weak global solution. That means if p is less than or equal to this order, then we cannot expect the existence of the even the weak global solution. Okay, so that means that p must be always strictly greater than this number. So this is the basic assumption. Okay, for example, if n equal to one one special dimensional cases, then it is just an infinity. So that means that we have no no weak, weak global solution. Okay, so another important. Another important uh, indices is, is uh, uh, Strauss indices. This is uh, uh, this is uh, some solution of some quadratic uh, equations. So this is uh, important because it's a lower bound for the existence of strong strong global solutions. Okay, and uh, another uh, important indices is the conformal and the critical indices uh, defined by the. Uh, n plus three over n minus one. Okay, uh, we know that uh, these two, uh, these three indices have uh, this in inequality. P conf is the largest, and uh, P k sub k is the lowest, and the P Strauss is between these two numbers. Okay, so uh, maybe I need to say something about the, these three three. Uh, Indices. So, 
because um, maybe uh, uh, so maybe this is what I've already explained. If p is greater uh, less than or equal to this number, then if we, we choose some special uh, initial data, then the, the solution does not exist time globally. Uh, weak, weak solution does not exist time globally. Uh, this is a work by uh, Toshio Kato in 1980. So that means that p must be strictly greater than p sub k of n. Okay, so the remark on, on the structural synthesis. This is a positive root of the this quarter uh, uh, equations, and uh, related to this number. So there is some some uh, famous conjectures uh, called Strauss conjectures uh, posed in 1981. So the time global solution always exists for NLW if p is strictly greater than this uh, indices. And the size of the compact support is smooth initial data is small. small. If, so, so that means that small data global existence is true if P is strictly greater than these numbers. And no such desire is true if uh, uh, otherwise. So this was a conjecture uh, as of 1981, but it is not the conjecture anymore. The, this conjecture has been already uh, proved affirmatively. So this is not the conjecture anymore. So that means that if we expect the existence of the global strong global exist, uh, solution, then P must be greater than these numbers. Okay, this is our situation. So, so oh, there, there are ma ma many contribution to this problem so okay let, let me skip this slide okay uh, or, uh so i'm afraid that some any of the, of, of, of the person which is listed in this this uh, slide uh, participate in my, my talks but please uh, allow me if, if this is true so okay uh, let, let me skip skip this slide to save my time so okay here's the the, the largest uh Indices a p uh, conformal of n is uh, associated to the associated to, to the this kind of properties conformal symmetry because uh, uh, this kind of uh, symmetry map and, uh, uh, if you is a solution this uh, function de defined by using this transformation so maybe based on of some light con so it, uh, it also solves the equations. And the, 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 uh, when p is, is equal to this uh, conformal indices, okay. So in this sense, uh, this uh, indices it has another importance. Oh, but but uh, anyway, so I'll display some known results uh, for the existence of self-similar solutions. So the, maybe the first one is by Pecher in two thousand. Yeah. And his result is if n is equal to three, and if p is between these two numbers, so if p is greater than three, greater than stress number and less than three, less than conformal numbers. Then he showed uh, under this assumption, he showed the existence of the self similar solutions. And he, he later Hidano uh, two thousand two uh, showed the same showed the same result when n equals to equals to two, and for other dimensions and the, by series of uh, Kato Kato is not the Toshio Kato but the Jun Kato in in, in my, my uh, his my calling so, and this result can be completely extended to the any spatial dimensions n, okay. So in this sense, so we have already known, completely known the, the existence of the self similar solutions. Okay. Uh, he, he, uh, there are another attempt for other p which exceeds uh, which exceeds uh, these two ranges. So, but uh, let me also skip this slide to to <laughs> to save the time again. So. This is also an interesting story, but maybe it is out of my, my 
to topic to today. It's okay, anyway. So, but anyway, so their basic strategy is to uh, is uh, uh, to show the uh, uh, the basic strategy to sh show the existence of the self solution is, is to show the uniqueness of the solution to nonlinear web who is the initial data of this to special special types okay so once we show the uh, uniqueness of the solution of NLW with these two special initial data then because uh, you and you sub lambda also satisfy the, this initial data. So that, that means uh, because of the uniqueness, the corresponding solution also must be the same. So in this way, we can show the, the, the this identity because the initial data is the same. So in this way, we show that the U is a self-similar solution. Uh, the, the, the idea is very simple, very simple. So the importance is to, to show, show the uniqueness of the solutions. Okay, this is the situation. So of course, uh, the strategy is uh, simple, but the, uh, but the, there's some. Uh, there's some, there's some okay, okay, it recovered. It recovered? Okay, 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 okay. Covered. Sorry. Okay. So maybe it is uh, my fault. So, so my, my network's fault, I think. So please. And, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm. Okay. So, okay. So, so as I've already mentioned that the, to show the uniqueness and uh, the, so maybe there's uh, some contraction mapping argument again works so if we find some nice uh, banner space x where where the contraction mapping argument works then we can show the uh, existence also the uniqueness of the solution okay so the most important thing is to find the nice banner spaces x Okay, this is the most difficult part. So, for example, the picture introduced this kind of space and shows the, the existence of the self similar solutions. Okay, and cut also introduced this kind of, of the, another kind of the function spaces based on the on the Lorentz spaces and uh, everything is, is, is their the, the idea. So, by posing some new ideas, they establish the existence of the self similar solutions. That, that was the, the works. Okay. So, but our goal, uh, maybe my goal, our goal is to give uh, another proof, another uh, constructive proof, not by uh, using the, not by the contraction mapping argument, by uh, con some constructive argument. Okay. This is our goal. Okay. So, so maybe, okay, I'll explain how, how to construct the self similar solutions okay well, step by step okay so it is uh, this kind of argument is very uh, elementary but anyway i'll explain it so by the definition of the self similarity so uh, you, you must be completely coincide uh, to the u sub lambda uh, what, is, what what was u sub lambda this is defined in this way okay this is always true. That means that this must be true with lambda equal to one over t. Okay, so just plug in just one lambda uh, uh, to, to uh, one over lambda t, uh, one over t to this lambda. Then we have this relation. So that means the self, if the similar self similar uh, solution exists, then you satisfy this uh, relations. Okay, that means the uh, well, uh, right hand side is uh, has uh, this factor of the power of the t and the function of x over t. So that means uh, anyway, self similar solution must have, must be of of the this form t to the power minus beta. Here beta is uh, two over t minus one. This is exactly this one, okay? And times another function of x of t. 
u must be of this form. Okay. And the compass series, such u is self similar. We can very easily check that u, this u satisfies this identity. So that means the self similar solution is always is of this form. Okay. Okay. So, so I need to check the time. So okay, so I still have some time. Okay, so this is the first step, step one. Okay, so okay, then so then step two is to find the, the this uh, fee, fee. So to determine this fee, so we just plug this u into the no NFW equation itself to uh, deduce the equation uh, for for phi to satisfy it. Okay, this is the next step. Just plugging plug it by plugging it into NLW, we have the equation for phi. This is just just an elementary cal calculus. So we then we list this equation. So. So let's uh, restrict our consideration to the uh, radially symmetric function, which is uh, some, some usual strategy. So maybe general functions, if the general function is too wide to consider, then we just pass it. It's, it's sometimes uh, some useful to restrict our situation to the radially symmetric solution. Okay, let's for this idea, then let's assume that phi is of the one dimensional function uh, the the, the uh, radial symmetric function can defined by uh, one dimensional function uh, psi. Okay, then if plug in plug this uh, one to the this equation, then we have the equation for the of the psi psi here. This is equation for psi here, and here's another transformation. Let's assume that this psi is a function of the r squared, and let's rewrite to the this equation to by using this function uh, or the equation for of the uh, of the f here. Then now we reach the this uh, equation, uh, ordinary uh, equation of two of second orders with some uh, uh, singular. Um, some degenerate coefficient here. So it, because it is degenerate when s equal to zero and one, this is a, some some obstacle in this equation. But anyway, we reach the uh, we obtain the uh, uh, ordinary second order ordinary equations. Okay. So then the all our task is to to solve the this equation. This is a, 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 a current stage. Okay. But what is this? So maybe this is a, we can just rewrite this equation. Okay, let's rewrite this equation. First, let's divide both hand side by four, and let's introduce another three kind of indices A, B, C to to simplify this situation. So this is the next one. And let's write this. Just rewrite the equation in this way. With the right hand side, we we we, uh, we introduce this kind of operator here. So, and uh, here, a, if a b c is uh, this one, then we, this uh, equation is complete completely coincide with the previous equations. Okay, let's call it uh, the N L H G. Okay, this is our situation. Uh, now, our last uh, task is to solve this equation. Okay. For this special uh, in this ABC, but uh, this NLHG is an abbreviation of the nonlinear hypergeometric equation. So because uh, because okay maybe I'll show the next slide. Because if the right hand side equal to zero, this is an original hypergeometric differential equations. Very uh, some classical subject, and. Uh, and the solution, some uh, special solution is uh, it's called the hypergeometric function. This is, there is many uh, some equivalent way to define the hypergeometric equation, but this is one way to define this equation so by by using a power series. 
this is a hypergeometric function and it solves these equations. Okay, so and uh, this is uh, some special solution in the, which is equal to equal to one at the initial point and it is always positive for other, other numbers. Okay, so this is uh, the famous uh, hypergeometric hypergeometric differential equation. So the, let's go back to the previous one. So maybe this can be called as a, uh, can be called the uh, uh, nonlinear version of the hypergeometric function. Okay, so that means uh, it is some some kind of discovery. I think that because in the, in the context of, of the self similar solutions, it is completely belong to the nonlinear uh, uh, equations. Uh, uh, as a, as a words, it reflects the nonlinearity of the of the uh, nonlinear wave equation hat so but uh, the inside uh, the uh, structure of the nonlinearity uh, the hypergeometric function is hidden inside so <laughs> maybe so I, this is I, I hope this is some new discovery so but anyway it's very in, in interesting discovery I think so maybe so in this sense so some uh, context of the hypergeometric differential equation uh, and uh, belongs to this kind of the constellations. Okay, so let's continue the, to the, the construction of the safe similar solutions. Okay, of course, the uh, main thing is, uh, is very well investigated for the hypergeometric differential equation itself, but not to the uh, uh, nonlinear version. Uh, that that is a point, but uh, maybe we can borrow many useful idea from the from the part of the knowledge on uh, hypergeometric differential equations. This is my my uh, another strategy. Maybe so, I, I, I can pick a, any kind of nice property of the hypergeometric differential equations. Okay, so let's use this for this idea. So. Let's find the solution to the nonlinear version of the hypergeometric function uh, over the, this form. Here, this h is a, a solution is a uh, the hypergeometric function, okay, whose property is very well investigated. Of course, it does not solve the nonlinear version. So we expect that if we multiply another factor, then we then we can we, then we we can expect that this kind of this function of, of uh, the function of this form solves the hypergeometric function. Okay, and then let's also multiply some small parameter epsilon. So sometimes uh, this uh, if we add too small to make the this size of this function small if it is necessary in the process of the solving the nonlinear equations. Okay, let's assume there are Self-similar solution has this form. Okay, it, so okay. Let, let me repeat some important thing. This epsilon is just a parameter, and this h is a known function. So only unknown uh, function is a g here. So let's rewrite our uh, NLHG by you uh, to to the equation of the this un unknown function g. Again, let's uh, plug this one into the NLHG to induce the uh, equation for g itself. Then we have the equation for this g. Let's call it a uh, 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 capital G here, okay? So now it seems to me rather still, still rather complicated, but it has a very nice situations because, uh, because we can construct the bounded Function which satisfies this capital G if epsilon is very small, okay, because uh, because uh, maybe I uh, maybe so maybe I will use this slide to show my my basic thought. So okay, because uh, because uh, if epsilon is very small, so that means if epsilon is so if epsilon is very small, then we can neglect the nonlinear terms here, nonlinear terms here. So in such a case, there, 
solution to this G is a constant function because the constant function solves this equation. Okay. Even if the uh, coefficient have some, some zero here, but it does not make any matter if epsilon is equal to zero, then the constant function always solves this equation. So that means that if epsilon is very small, then the solution G is very close to the constant function. We, we can expect this kind of arc. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and in fact, this is true. So, okay, this, this is my, my basic thought. So, but, but of course, uh, to, to realize this kind of idea, so I need some extra work. So I'll explain more tomorrow. So, the, but the most important property to make this uh, um, to the sort to re realize is a symmetry property of the nonlinear HG has because uh, the original usual hypergeometric function has uh, some this kind of similar kind of the symmetry here but such kind of symmetric property preserves even for the nonlinear version this is another discovery so so that means uh, this nonlinear nonlinearity has some nice structures, I think. Okay, some this uh, this property symmetric property is uh, reflects the nice property of the uh, of the, the nonlinearity. So uh, okay, I'll explain that if s just transform to the one minus s, uh, uh, let's uh, introduce the operator capital T. Uh, is defined by by this transformation and the, and. The, Another transformation is uh, is S. This trans, uh, in some sense, this is a, a Kelvin, something like a Kelvin transform, in, in the, because uh, zero just, uh, shift to the infinity and the infinity shift to the zero. Okay, so let's introduce these two uh, operators. These two operators does not change the structure of the equations. For example, this our nonlinear HG shift to to the another another uh, nonlinear HG with a di different indices here uh, by the operator S. By the operator T, it again it can be shifted to the another kind of the similar kind of the NLHG with a different indices. And uh, so, so we have some some commutative com com di diagram by using this uh, uh, two operators here. So that means that we can always shift to, to the, for example, we can always the uh, argument near zero to the near one and near uh, zero to the infinity and 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 so on. So maybe you can use use this kind of nice symmetric properties, and it is also true. Okay. So as I've already explained already, so it is uh, summarized in this slide. So S is correspond to the interval shift of uh, of the interval zero one to the to the e, to the interval e one infinity. So that means our our concession must be restricted to, to the only the interval zero one. So because the result for the the interval one infinity it can be derived from from the uh, by, by using the, this uh, operator s so that means uh, uh, it's suffice to consider the uh, equation only on this band and the, uh, the intervals here and also the most uh, important part is to consider the solution near the zeros of the coefficient uh, okay, let me go back to the equation G here. There are some two singular points, zero and one here. This is the most uh, delicate point, but uh, but we can always shift the zero to the one and one to the zero by the operator T. So, uh, so maybe it's, uh, so that means it's to consider G only near S equals zero. 
So the information, yes, yeah, equal to one, can be derived from, from the, the information from zero, so S near zero by using this uh, vector Q here. Okay, so maybe by using this shift, so maybe all of our consideration is, 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 uh, is only near the uh, origin, S equal to zero. So this is my uh, first reduction. Okay, then our next thing is to solve the, this uh, equation G uh, it, by using some, uh, uh, how to say maybe, so let me uh, let assume that the solution is, uh, has of the power series type, type uh, the function of the power series types, and so, okay. Let's assume G is, uh, in some sense, G is a real analogy. And so, uh, so that means that just we plug in the, this power series to the equation, then we have some, uh, some, some relation some for the coefficient AK. So maybe, maybe skip the every detail, just plug in and some, let's, uh, have some relation for the coefficient, each coefficient. So if we do it, then we have, uh, for, for example, for example, so maybe <laughs> this AK is just the, uh, the zeros, uh, the value at the zero of the case derivatives here, okay? So to get the, uh, to get the relation for AK, then just, uh, differentiate the, the both hand sides of this equation G and just uh, take S equal to zero here. Then we have the, uh, some con uh, relation for the AK. So, okay, let's, let's do, do it in the, in the next slide. If we just uh, plug in S equal to zero without any der derivation, so we have the, some fast, uh, uh, fast relation here, then we, then next we first uh, differentiate G, both and G and let's and take the S equal to zero here. Then we have the, this kind of relation. Let, let's see the next, this one. So that means that second de derivative of the G, uh, second derivative of G prime, we can be determined by uh, G, uh, G so two dot it can be de determined by the G one dot and, and G itself, okay? And the G, and the G one dot is equal to the, this G, G of zero here. So that means that we can and explicitly determine the, the, what, what, what this G double prime must be. Okay, in this way we can de de determine what G double, double prime exactly. And we just iterate this procedure. <laughs> okay, so in this way we can completely determine the, every coefficient of the power series and the, which the G, G has. So, and the important thing is uh, by some induction argument, so we can see that this, uh, this case derivative uh, there's uh, the, the value of the case derivative at zero is uh, of, of this small order here. So once we establish, uh, establish this property, then just we see that, there, that this power series uh, converges. Okay, so maybe just by such kind of strategy, we can say that this exactly this power series solves equations. Okay, so this is a very basic strategy. So maybe, so in this way, we can uh, construct the safe similar solution. Okay, let's uh, summarize every, uh, some, every steps. And so if we su summarize, we, we have the Safe similar solution of the of this point here. Safe similar solution is a t uh, the has a power, uh, the factor of the, the power of the t here and the factor of the of the hypergeometric functions here, 
and some nice bounded function here. This is uh, almost constant and if the epsilon is very small. This is a very nice function. So in this sense, the most, that, that means there, uh, of course, the uh, hypergeometric function, it has some singularity. So the property of the self-similar solution is, is, uh, is uh, reflected by, by the uh, pr uh, property of the uh, hypergeometric function that's here. Okay, so that means the singularity of the, the U depends on the singularity, uh, singularity of the self-similar solution uh, is determined by the singularity of the hypergeometric functions. Okay, so, so okay, but, but it is just a, it's a, still is a tentative, tentative uh, solution because uh, uh, the only our, our final task is to to justify that this u belongs to the distribution okay because uh, we need to take the power power of the dysfunction if we take some power here it must be distribution or or, or, or rather strongly it must be locally integrable so sometimes it's true Sometimes it's not true. Everything depends on, on the on the number of this power power p. Okay, L let's ch check this kind of things. When this is uh, uh, locally integrable. Okay. So, but for example, this is a very special situation. So. For example, this function u is a, is a, a, a this is a, a, a stable means a, stable means a, this is a solution which does not depend on, on depend on time t. Okay, so we can easily check that this function sol solves uh, is a self uh, stable similar similar solution. <laughs> okay, and uh, its power belongs to L1 local if P is sm strictly smaller than this numbers. Okay, so that, that means uh, if, uh, so what, what I, I want to say here is maybe the range of, of P is, is, is usually restricted if we consider the distribution solutions. Okay, so this is a very, very special situation. So what, what happened in, in our cons, uh, solution? Okay, so, but it, uh, unfortunately it is not always the case for our construction. So for example, if P, let's take P equal to the, this special number, this is a coincide with the p sub k of L, cathode indexes. So, so cathode result say that there is no weak global solution when p equal this number. So, so th that means the, the corresponding our, our so, uh, tentative solution is not the solution. Okay, let, let's let's see it anyway. So, because uh, in this case. Corresponding hypergeometric function is a, just an elementary function, very simple functions. You can see such kind of thing. So by our construction, this is, a, is a, our tentative uh, self-similar solution. So, so what time is it now? Oh, it's almost it's time, is almost over. Okay, let's go to the, uh, co uh, my conclusion. Uh, so, Mr. Sugimoto, so you, you, yeah. you still have approximately five or seven minutes maybe. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, thank, thank, thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so in the case, this is our tentative solution, but it does not belong to LP. That means the, the piece power of this function does not, is not the, the distribution. Okay, because we can easily calculate it when it is uh, integrable, uh, uh, it belongs to LP. So that means uh, this, uh, that means that this, okay, uh, mm, uh, by, by some, some elemental constellation, this 
this is true belongs to LP local if this inequality is true, but it is always fails <laughs> because P over P minus one is always greater than one. Okay, that means uh, this number, in, if P has this power nonlinearity uh, or has this over, then our construction is out of the category of the distribution. Okay, so, but uh, three special dimension cases. So we can expect this explicitly see what is the, what the hypergeometric function is. So in this special cases, our hypergeometric function is of this forms. Some very, uh, another kind of uh, elementary functions. Okay, so okay. Let, let's see the uh, our tentative solution by using this uh, expression. Okay, uh, or, or when p equal to three, so maybe uh, because so if p equal to three here, this is is power zero. So maybe this is a very exceptional exceptional cases. This is not the power zero, but it can be shifted to the uh, sorry shifted to the log log. So, uh, but, 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 but anyway, so our same similar solution is uh, okay. uh, let's just remember this kind of form and our H everything can be delighted to uh, some another message, so it's unstable, unstable. But, 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 but maybe it's, it's okay. So, okay. So that means uh, that means uh, because H has some singularity near zero, so okay, near, near zero here. So that means uh, our solution has some singularity along the light cone, uh, along the light cone. This situation, so so maybe for the nonlinearity term to make sense, so, so we we can have some uh, condition for the power of p by using the explicitly form of the function h. Okay, this is uh, the this condition. This is called this condition. By solving this condition, uh, this is equivalent to the p is strictly greater than the Plus number, which is one plus square root of two. So that that, that means uh, so our construction. Uh, so maybe we can say that we recapture the self similar solution in the by, in a constructive way. So we recapture the result by Pechia. Pechia maybe Pechia just shows that the existence of the self similar solution under these conditions. Okay. But we can have some explicit, almost explicit form of the self-similar solutions. Okay, so but in the in the Pechia's work, he has some old has another upper bound for the range of the p, which is p must be less than this number. If in this case it could, this is equal to three, but this is just the condition for the, our solution. You belong to the LP globally, globally. So, but to, but to, to make our solution, to have our solution make sense, so it is not necessary to, to expect that you belong to the LP globally. globally. So, so you can exclude this condition here. Because the picture uses uh, some construction mapping theorem. So then in such a case, uh, such a space must be Banachar spaces. So that's why the, he the, he needs some global integrability, but, but for the, in the if we for the uh, the constructive way, uh, as I explained, so we do not ne uh, ne 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 need this kind of some global integrability. So that means that we can uh, some avoid this upper restrictions. So this is a, another. Uh, remark here. So, but anyway, in this is uh, the result by Pecha is recaptured and even, even extended. Okay, okay. But uh, anyway, so my time is almost uh, over. But uh, this is uh, almost uh, final 
slide and uh, we have the conclusions. Well, uh, conclusion is a uh, uh, hypergeometric functions are behind the nonlinear wave equations. <laughs> okay, so this is what I want to some some emphasize in, in my talks and. Uh, Here's another remark, and maybe so uh, so far, and uh, implicitly indicated this fact in a, in a di different context, not uh, explicitly, but in, in, in implicitly indicated. So and another remark is is uh, by virtue of, of the, this property, we can construct self-similar solutions. Okay, this is my final conclusions, and this is my final remarks. And uh, th thank you very much for your attention, uh, especially in this uh, difficult time. And, uh, thank you very much. There any questions or comments? No, no comments. Uh, so please raise your hand if there is a question. Okay. Let me see. What's up? Okay. So, Professor Sugimoto, I'd like to ask a yeah. quite fundamental question, okay? Quite fundamental, yes, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. So could, may I have a look at page two? Page two, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, so we have only one integral term here. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the so solution formula. Mm -hmm. Do I have to deal with two in integral formula or do I have one is enough? Uh, about well, it, I well, want well, to ask well, about uh, it. Yes, well, 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 so, so maybe, so I just skipped the details here. So, uh, uh, how to say, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, okay. Okay, let's first assume that this U is not a linear term, but some inhomogeneous term, some given function. Yeah, something like this. Okay, okay. so then, some uh, solution formula is very well known, <laughs> very well known. So is that uh, the solution is given by this two two which is part, yes. depend on the initial inhomogeneous terms. Okay, okay. So this is, is a solution if if it's just inhomogeneous term. So what, what does the solution U mean to the nonlinear equation? That means that U is equals to the, this right hand side with F replaced uh, in homogeneous terms replaced by the the piece power of the of the U itself. Okay. So <laughs> then then it, it, so then U, U, U is a solution. If U is a solution, then this U is a, is a fixed point of the, this. Uh, uh, mapping it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So Thank you. one integrator is enough. We, because it de depends, uh, it ca comes from the uh, solution formula of the inhomogeneous uh, <laughs> equations. Okay. Mm. okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Professor Makino is going to ask a question. Um, so, oh. please, Professor Makino, so give a question to Professor Sugimoto. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. May I ask you, uh, you constructed the uh, uh, key. As uh, uh, conversion, converting the power series at s equals zero. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how about the radius of convergence? Uh -huh. It should be uh -huh. uh, strictly less than one for non zero epsilon. No? Strictly less than one. So, maybe yes, 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 yes. So, but uh, maybe strictly less than one. So, because uh, so my, my strategy is. Uh, Convergent radius is is one. So, by if we for this uh, argument, so so to uh, prolong to extend the, the solution, continue the solution uh, for large S. So we just use uh, this symmetric properties here. So I see. If we solve the equation from zero to one, so then that all, all automatically means uh, it's a solution to the of, of one to infinity. And this, because we solve the equation near zero, so it, it automatically means uh, mean that it, we can solve the equation. Uh -huh. 
uh, yeah, zero one. Because everything is a real analytic situation, we can continue with everything. So that is a global solution. That that uh -huh. is a basic strategy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. No questions. No no comments. Okay. So now let the speaker. Let's give us applause. And just a second. So I should have said that there is a coffee break after four minutes. So you should mm -hmm. check your email and go it go to another um, how to say Zoom account, please. Mm -hmm. However, well, do we have something to say? No. no so very good. Yes. <laughs> All good, Yoshihiro. You said everything. You remembered everything. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I leave the meeting, so uh, to, to <laughs> okay, maybe how to. Maybe good time to stop here. Yeah, so let, okay. Let us meet at the coffee break okay, okay. after three uh, minutes. Re, re, re. Yes. So please check your email. See you again, sir. I close the meeting. Yes, please. <laughs>